Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. For the first time in months, Phil has a chance to get away for a short trip. He's planned to take a real man's vacation, but at the last minute, Alice decided to go with him. And as we look in, they're all packed and ready to leave. Well, I got everything loaded in the car. We'll be ready to leave pretty soon. <laughs> Alice, are you sure you want to go with me? Oh, I can hardly wait, Phil. This trip will be like a second honeymoon. Gee, it's going to be romantic. If you say so. <laughs> And honey, on the way down, you can put your arm around me like you did on our first honeymoon. Hey, I got a better idea. We can sit in the back of the car and uh, smooch a little. <laughs> <laughs> Would be kind of nice to... Say, hey, wait a minute. If we're both be gonna, if we're going to be in the back, who's going to be driving? Oh, uh, um, I forgot to tell you, honey, uh, Frankie's going with us. <laughs> Frankie's going to Palm Springs with us? Oh, we ain't going to Palm Springs. Why not? Oh, Frankie don't like it there. <laughs> you know, he's allergic to the heat. When he sits out in the sun, he gets fried. I've seen him sit in a dimly lit room and get in the same condition. <laughs> Where are we going on our vacation, or hasn't Lord Remley decided yet? Yeah, he decided. He wants us to go hunting in the High Sierras. Now, Phil Harris, you've got to make a decision. Frankie wants to go to the High Sierras, and I want to go to Palm Springs. Now, whom are you going to please, Frankie or me? Me. We're going fishing at Lake Henshaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, Phil, I want to go to Palm Springs. If we don't go there, I just won't go with you. Or don't you want me to go? How can you say that? <laughs> What fun is it for two guys to go along fishing without a woman nagging? I mean, tagging along. <laughs> Why, I wouldn't want you to miss the fun of sleeping outdoors on the hard, cold ground or eating soggy, cold, fried eggs. Oh, Bill, and just please. think of the thrill you'll get when you're baiting our hooks with those nice, fat, squirmy worms. <laughs> every time somebody mentions worms. <laughs> Phil, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be okay. Alice, don't ever let me say that word again. <laughs> Look, honey, can't we please go fishing? All right, all right, we'll go fishing. After all, it's your vacation. I'd rather go to Palm Springs, but I won't be obstinate. Now you're talking like my baby, you pretty thing. You know something? You're being big about this, and to show you my appreciation, I'm going to do something big for you. I'm going to kiss you. Pucker up. Good morning, Philip. <laughs> Go away, Brownie. We've already bought some Girl Scout. <laughs> we don't need nothing. Come here, Alice. Philip, mm. Philip. What now? Come 
many times have I asked you not to kiss my sister in front of me? <laughs> you know it makes me nauseous. <laughs> really? Willie, if you don't mind, I like to have Phil kiss me. Why? Well, because... <laughs> well, because it's... Well, it's... That is it. Well, it. think of something, will you? <laughs> You never had to think before we were married Let's to not never... not waste time talking. Let's get started on our trip. We'll get started when... Our trip. <laughs> yes, Alice invited me to go along. I have the whole thing planned. We'll go to Ensenada for the Grunion Run. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, I don't think the Grunion Run in March... Oh, yes, Alice. The Grunion are running in Ensenada next week. I don't care if they're running or not. I ain't interested in seeing no Mexican track meet. <laughs> a, a Grunion run is not a track meet. A Grunion is a vertebrate member of the species Piscatorial. <laughs> oh, you're joshing me. <laughs> Really, it's of the species Piscatorial. Believe me, it's better off as a track meet. <laughs> now, we're going fishing at Lake Henshaw, and I don't want you along because you bother me. Oh, but, Phil, we're only going fishing. He won't get in your way. The heck he won't. Frankie and me took him fishing with us last time, and it was very annoying. We spent most of the time dragging him back in a boat. Why? Did he fall overboard? No, we kept getting him confused with a live bait. <laughs> I want to go to Ensenada. And I want to go to Palm Springs. I tell you, we're going to Lake Henshaw. Well, if everybody's ready, let's leave for the high Sierra. <laughs> I can't wait to get started hunting. Frankie, I told you we're not going to the high Sierra. Remley. Hmm? What are you made up for? <laughs> this is my hunting outfit. Buckskin jacket, coonskin cap, powder horn, and flintlock. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby Hayes. <laughs> of all the ridiculous costumes. Why have you got your guitar strung over your shoulder? Oh, I use that as a lure. When I play Ain't She Sweet in B-flat, it sounds like a perfect moose call. <laughs> you could play that thing in any key and it'd sound like a moose call. <laughs> Remley, I told you we're not going hunting. I've decided that we're going fishing. You've decided? Curly, you're being very selfish. You're not the only one involved. The least you can do is consider somebody else's feelings. Like your dear wife. Alice, do you want to go hunting or fishing? I want to go to Palm Springs. Who asked you? <laughs> Doesn't anybody care what I want to do? No! No! <laughs> hey, Curly, don't tell me this is going too. Yeah, this is going. We got to take him fishing with us. What for? You know, the fish kept throwing him back last time. <laughs> we'll sharpen his ears and use him for an anchor. Why do you two always pick on me? Willie, why do you let them pick on you? If it were me, I'd hole off and punch them right in the nose. Well, I know, Alice, but you're stronger than I am. <laughs> Just you fellas wait till I get my dynamic tension course. Mm. Then I'll take you two bullies and I'll thrash you. All right, Louie, college. drop that gun. <laughs> get lost, Mammy Yoakum. Go whip up a batch of gingerbread men. Get away from me. Oh, this is going to be a Jim Dandy vacation. A very congenial group of enemies. I still think we ought to go to Ensenada. Ensenada? <laughs> Yeah, that's an He wants to go down there and watch the bunions run. <laughs> now, come on, if everybody's ready, let's get going, huh? And please, let's not have any more arguments. I got the park parked out in front, and I'd like to get started so we can get there before dark. Oh, Phil. Phil, I'd like to stop at Mother's to see how the children are behaving. Oh, well, don't worry about the children, Alice. Mother took them down to City Hall this morning for the ceremonies. Ceremonies? Are they getting married? <laughs> don't be silly. No, it's boys' week in town, and the boys are taking over all the official positions today. Oh. Hey, Frankie. Hey, kid, we're going to have a wonderful time. Yeah? Yeah, I got fishing equipment for everybody, and Remley, now what? you can leave that gun here. You won't need it for fishing, and I don't want no loaded gun in the car. Curly, please, I know better than to walk around with a loaded gun. 
I don't have shells in here. I'll show you. Remley, don't fire that thing. I tell you, it's not loaded. Look. Hey. <laughs> Bet you all thought it was going to go off. <laughs> I know what I'm doing every minute. I'm an expert with guns. And... <laughs> I gotta have this slow trigger fixed. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Get us all arrested? Now, come on, let's get in the car. It's getting late, and we got a five hour drive ahead of us. Phil? Phil, what's that card tied to your steering wheel? The card? I don't know. I'll see. Oh, it's an invitation. It says they want me in traffic court tomorrow morning to. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, a parking ticket in front of my own house. I'm just gonna ignore it. Curly. You have to obey the law. When you get a ticket, you gotta answer it. But this ticket says I gotta be in court tomorrow morning. That'll ruin our vacation. Tear it up. <laughs> Phil, you can't tear it up or ignore it. Why don't you go down to City Hall and pay the fine now? It'll only take a few minutes. I'll go down there, but I ain't gonna pay no fine. I'm gonna raise the roof. Uh, Phil, just pay the fine. Don't start anything or they'll liable to throw you in jail. Let them throw me in jail. I know my rights. I'm going down to that City Hall and tell them off. Come on. is east and west is west and the wrong one I have chose let's go where I'll keep on wearing those frills and flowers and buttons and bows and rings and things and buttons and bows don't bury me in this prairie take me where the cement grows let's move down to some big town with a loving gal by the cut of her clothes and I'll stand out in buttons and bows We'll love you in buckskin or skirts that you've homespun. Oh, but I'll love you longer, stronger, where your friends don't tote a gun. My bones denounce the buckboard bounce and my cactus hurts my toe. Let's bear moose where gals keep using those silks and satins and linens that shows. And I'm all yours with buttons and bows. <laughs> Where I feel at home and not the lone prairie. My bones denounce the buckboard bounce and the cactus hurts my toes. Let's bear moose where girls keep using those silks and satins and linen that shows. And I'm all yours in buttons and bows. Give me Eastern Trail. Where women are women in high silk hose and peekaboo clothes and French perfume. That rocks the room. And I'm all yours. Buttons and bows. A fine wife. Her husband faces a jail sentence and she sings. Oh, right. come on, Remley. Alice, you and Willie wait in the car. We'll only be a few minutes in City Hall. Now, Phil, Phil, please don't offend the police commissioner. Don't worry. Remley, I ain't gonna see no police commissioner. I'm going over his head and see the mayor. I know I'll get a square deal from him. I'll see the... Remley, why are you still carrying that gun? It's for you. In case they put you in jail, you can blast your way out. <laughs> Don't be funny at a time like this, huh? Let's go in. Hey, Curly, what are all these kids doing here? I don't know. Willie said something about boys' week. Here's the mayor's office. I ain't gonna have no trouble with him. He's a good Joe, and he'll give me a square deal. Mr. Mayor, I... Take your hat off when you talk to me, man! <laughs> Julius, what are you doing behind the mayor's desk? This is Boys Week, and I've been a painted mayor. You're the mayor? Yeah, and don't let me catch you guys tapping my wires. <laughs> Well, it's this way, Julius. I'll thank you to address me as Your Royal Highness. <laughs> your Royal Highness? Don't stand there, peasants. Kneel down. <laughs> Come on, grovel a little. Hey, Curly, step to one side. I want to get a bead on him. <laughs> oh. 
can't do that in here. Don't talk till you got my permission. Now, state your case and make it snappy. I'm in a surly mood today. <laughs> well, I came to see you about a ticket. $50 or 50 days? I didn't tell you what it's for yet. I got no time for details. <laughs> oh, come on, Curly. We won't get any square deal here. I heard that and I resent it. Just state your case and I assure you that I'll hand down a just decision. Now, let me hear your entire story. Okay. My car was parked outside. It wasn't moving. The motor was dead. Guilty of murder in the first degree. Will you stop that? <laughs> Look, Julius, I mean, your royal highness, I got a ticket that says I got to be in court tomorrow, and, well, well, I can't be, so I want to pay my fine now. Why can't you be in court tomorrow? I'm driving up to Lake Henshaw for five days to do a little fishing. If you want to go fishing, I ain't going to spoil your vacation. If you want to drive up to Lake Henshaw, go ahead. I'll let you pay your fine now. Oh, thank you, Julius. What's the fine? I'm revoking your driver's license for five days. <laughs> now, you can't do that. Look, Julius, oh, I'm going to... Curly, Curly, don't argue with him. Oh. Give me a license. You don't need it. I'll drive. Okay. Then you can drive us up to Henshaw. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I got a special driver's license. It only allows me to drive when I'm going in the direction of the high Sierras. <laughs> all right, all right, so we'll go, huh? Good, let's get started. Not so fast! <laughs> Mr. Remley, what are you doing carrying that rifle in the city limits? I'm taking it to go hunting. Fifty bucks for carrying a concealed weapon! <laughs> <laughs> this gun ain't concealed, I'm carrying it in the open. You can see it. Not when I close my eyes like this. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Emily, but the law says I gotta revoke your hunting license. <laughs> Joke's on you, Junior. You can't revoke my hunting license because I haven't got one. <laughs> well, I gotta revoke something. So I'll revoke your driver's license. Julius, I'm warning you. All right, you. Remley, all right, Remley. Let me handle it. Julius, look. I know you don't care about us, but Mrs. Harris is gonna be with us. And you don't want to spoil my wife's vacation, do you? His wife? What a golden opportunity. <laughs> I hereby revoke your marriage license. Why, you little... be a great vacation. This is fine. I can't go fishing or hunting. I can't drive. I'm not married. And if I say one word more, I won't even be born. <laughs> oh, Julius, be a sport, will you? Give me back my license so we can go hunting. I don't want it. I think hunting is cruel. What's cruel about it? The animal has the same chance that we have. Sometimes the animal's got the advantage. Like when Elmer went after the bear. You know what happened to him? No, what did happen? Tell me all about it, Mac. Now Elmer Jones arose at dawn and put his hunting breeches on Then looked up at the shotgun on the wall He made his mind up then and there to bag himself a hunk of bear At hunting he had plenty on the ball He milked the cow and fed the hog Then kissed his wife and called the dog Picked up his gun and started on his quest he crossed the creek and hit the trees, threw back his head and sniffed the breeze, let out a yell and pounded on his chest. Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. He hunted all the morning through, but not a bear came into view while Elmer's thoughts were on the kitchen range. For he was sick as he could be of lamb and chicken fricassee and craved a mess of bear meat for a change. Poor Elmer's mind was in a fog. He paused and sat down on a log to get his faculties back in the groove. He heard a noise, and standing there before him was a grizzly bear and figured it was time he made his move. Here comes Elmer. Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer. Run, bear, run. He grabbed his gun and turned around, but Mr. Bear just stood his ground, and Elmer said, it's either me or thou. The gun refused to go, and so he knew that somebody had to go and said, Farewell, I'm leaving as of now. Then Elmer's shoulders sprouted wings, his feet developed inner springs. To linger longer, he was disinclined. He ran so fast through muck and mire, his ankles set his socks afire, but still that bear kept coming on by. Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. A 
deer with antlers eight feet wide got in the way of Elmer's stride as both of them went heading for the brush. Then Elmer said, now listen, son, if that's the fastest you can run, move over, because I'm really in a rush. The bear was gaining inch by inch and finally reached out for the clinch as Elmer saw the fence around his place. He leaped the fence and landed hard, jumped 60 feet across the yard and slammed the kitchen door in Bruin's face. Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. The bear was trying to get inside while Elmer sought a place to hide and Mrs. Jones began to pull her hair. She said, this fuss has got to stop. Why don't you let that matter drop? And Elmer said, honey, you go tell it to the bear. Then Elmer's wife said, listen, goon, how come you think you're Daniel Boone whose appetite on bear meat used to thrive? He said, I'm sure that you're aware that Daniel always killed his bear, but honey, I done brought this baby home alive. Here comes Elmer. Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer. Run, bear, run. Well, that's what happened to Elmer. How'd you like the song, Julius? Fifty dollars for the stable of peace. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. You, you can't get away with this. Besides, I ain't got fifty dollars on me. Ain't got fifty bucks, huh? Well, in that case, you'll have to leave that gun here as security. It's my gun, and I'm not going to give it to anybody. Frankie. Hmm? If the uh, mayor uh, wants your gun, uh, give it to him. Let him have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see what you mean. And just to make sure it isn't loaded, before we leave, I'll pull the trigger. Like this. Here's the gun, Julius. Come on, Charlie. How long do you think it'll take, Frankie? <laughs> oh, should go off before I can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> Nice and quiet in here. <laughs> Do you think uh, maybe? Uh... Help! Help! Stop them two anarchists! They tried to assassinate the mayor. We should have known Birdshot couldn't pierce his ornery little hide. Come on, let's get out of here. Pat. Yeah. Now look, let's get started on our trip before we get pinched. How are we going to go on a trip when both of us had our license taken away? We'll let Alice drive. Alice. Please, Curly, I'd like to get there in one piece. She don't drive a car, she aims it. Stop worrying, will you? She ain't hit nothing in weeks. She'll get us there. Where have you fellows been? Yes, what took you so long? Oh, Julius is the mayor, honey, this week. And he revoked our driver's license, so get behind the wheel. You'll have to drive. Oh, you mean you fellows are not allowed to drive? You mean I'll be at the wheel and the car will have to go wherever I aim it? Yeah. Yeah, now let's get started for Lake Henshaw. Lake Henshaw? Oh, what a naive little character I'm married to. Oh, goody, Alice. If they can't drive, that means we can go to Ensenada. Pipe down, you grunion chaser. <laughs> Palm Springs, here we go. All come. right, all right, so we'll go to Palm Springs, but let's get started. Uh, uh Alice? Uh, be careful how you drive. You know, you're pretty reckless and you don't... Please, Frankie, don't tell me how to drive. I know exactly Alice, what I'm Alice, don't turn exactly around and talk to him. Look where Alice... Oh, Alice, hey, look hey, out hey, for that hey, car. Hey. Look out. <laughs> Ooh, what a crash. Alice, you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Phil, are you okay? Oh, yeah. I always ride with my head in the glove department. <laughs> I didn't know that car was that big. Boom! <laughs> I heard. I was afraid. Fenders went everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Alice, look at the car. Now you've wrecked it and spoiled my whole vacation. Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. 
do you hate me, lover? Well, I never thought of it before, but I'm starting to work on it now. <laughs> well, I guess now we can't go anyplace. Correction, lady, you're going someplace. That was my police car you hit, and you're spending the next few days in the cooler. Come along with me. All right, officer, just wait a minute now. You can't arrest her. I'm married to her, and I won't let you take her. Oh, you won't, huh? Just for that wise guy, you can spend a few days in the same cell with your wife. Uh, well... I'd like to, but, uh, but I couldn't. Uh, people will talk. <laughs> Why? Well, you see, the mayor just revoked our marriage license, and uh, she is no longer my wife. Take her away, officer. <laughs> Goodbye, lady. I tell you, Frankie, women should never be able to drive a car. They should be taught a lesson. You it's can't a let us hide. They never hide. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist has a customer. Have you noticed how I always ask for Rexall drug products lately? Indeed I have, ma'am, and I'm very happy about it. It's those wonderful laboratory tests the Rexall people make on their different drug products that convinced me. I'm glad you told me about them. Then maybe I'd better tell you something else. A lot of Rexall drug products get much more than just laboratory testing. Oh, why? What do you mean? Well, you see, ma'am, some drug products can be made more effective if they're tested by actual use. And that's why, in a lot of instances, the makers of Rexall drug products conduct what they call use trials. Use trials? Yes, ma'am. Uh, suppose Rexall scientists have developed a new throat lozenge. Now, this throat lozenge may be ideal by all scientific standards, but you can't reproduce the human throat in a laboratory. So, under the watchful eyes of Rexall scientists, as many as 200 people will try this lozenge in actual use, and for a considerable period of time. Oh, I see. Each one of those people is a use trial? Exactly. Some of them may not like the taste of the lozenge. Others will think it's too small or too large. Some may say it dissolves too fast, and still others, well, they may not like the color. Well, all those things are important. And that's exactly why these use trials enable Rexall people to make their products completely acceptable long before we ever get them in our stores. And that's another reason why we independent Rexall druggists are proud of the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign tells the world ours are the only stores where you can get the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. And we tell you, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. This is Phil again. Next week is National Boys Club Week. Over a quarter million boys in 300 clubs throughout the country are now enjoying the benefits of the boys' club movement. They're developing the character, self-reliance, and tolerance so needed by America's citizens of tomorrow. So support the boys' club in your town. If you don't have one, start one. Good night. Good night and thanks. Good night. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Included in today's cast was Alan Reed. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.